Hi everyone, I hope you are all doing super great. It's been a while, I know, but I'm back and this time it's going to be a bit different. Now as most of you know, I've been creating bullet journaling content since April 2020 and here and there I also created some DIY content. Near the end of 2020, I decided to only focus my channel on bullet journaling and art and I moved away from the DIYs. I continued to create a setup for each month but I'll be honest, it started feeling like I was only drawing so that I can put out another YouTube video. And I know I'm not the first bullet journaling channel coming out and saying I'm tired of it. But although I was tired of the drawing part, I still really enjoy planning. And recently I've fallen in love with creating digital planning templates on canva.com. So I thought, why not change up my channel? It's still planning, it's still artsy, it's just digital, so that's what I'm going to do from now on. I'm going to create planning templates on Canva for each month, print them out and put them in this soft cover ring binder to use as my planner. So although it's a bit different than usual, I really hope you guys enjoy this digital plan with me. So for those not familiar with this platform, canva.com is an online graphic design website where you can design literally anything from invitations, planners, wall decor, anything you can design on this website. So on canva.com, you're going to click on create a design. I wanted to create a B5 page size, but they didn't have it. So I just Googled the dimensions and created a custom size design. Later, however, I decided to change the size to A5. So for the cover page, I wanted to create a collage of different art style leaves around the title. I clicked on elements on the left and typed in leaves. Then I clicked on graphics. I first only wanted to gather all the different leaves that I liked on the page, so that's why I'm just placing them very random. Keep in mind that I'm using the pro version of Canva, so I have a lot more options, but the free version still has a lot of options as well. As you can see, I'm going for a green-blue color scheme. Now I'm adding a new page where I'm actually going to create the cover page. I clicked on elements again and went to lines and shapes. I want to have a block where the title is going to be. Then I clicked on text on the left and I scrolled down to see if there's a font that I like. These two fonts are grouped so I clicked on the one I don't like and deleted it. You don't have to ungroup them first like I did. I wanted the letters of the title more spaced out, so I just clicked on this symbol here and dragged the letter spacing bar. I adjusted the font size as needed. Now it's time to add the leaves. You can adjust the position in relation to the other objects on the page by clicking on position at the top and then choosing to send it backward or forward. copy something you can go to the top right and click on that little rectangle with the plus sign on it.
I didn't want the title to be black, so I went with a very dark teal blue. I really liked how it was looking, but something was missing. So I went to Elements again and searched for watercolor dots. I played around with the placement and sizes of the dots. I also cropped it to use in different places to get a bit of variation. Next, I'm going to create my monthly calendar. To create the calendar grid, I just went to Elements again and searched Grid under Graphics. This grid is 5 by 5 squares, so I'll have to add some more squares to complete the calendar by copying and cropping the same grid graphic. I played around with the font styles and sizes for the title. I want my calendar to stretch across two pages, so I cropped the grid on this page and then pasted a copy of the grid on the next page. To check if the grids are in line with each other, I clicked this square at the bottom right 
which gives me an overview of all the pages I created. Next, I started adding some leaves for decorations. I added a section on the right of the calendar to write down my goals for the month. I thought this was a good way to fill the space. I went to elements and searched for lines to use as the space to write my goals on. I first searched under graphics but when I couldn't find what I was looking for, I went to photos. After I inserted the photo, I cropped it to fit the space. When you zoom in, you can move things a lot more precisely. I regularly go back to the overview to check if everything is balanced, including the decorations.
The next page will be my weekly planning setup, where I will write down all my to-dos for the week, as well as my top three priorities for that week. I love seeing all my tasks, important and non-important, all written out so that I can prioritize and divide them into different days of the week. I wanted to create a border around the notes section, so I went to elements and then lines and shapes and clicked on the square border. To make it thinner, shrink the border first and then adjust the lengths of the sides. I like this cluster of leaves that I created more than the one that's on the calendar page, so I replaced that one with the new leaf cluster. I didn't like that the same cluster was used on two different spreads, so I altered one just a little bit by removing and adding some different leaves. From here on, I used a different recording software, which is why the mouse pointer now has a blue ring whenever I click on something. On the next page, I will be creating my days of the week planning spread, where I will divide all my tasks into the different days of the week.
for the sections of the days of the week, I just copied the task list on the previous page and then cropped it. So I didn't really notice this pop up for a while. And yeah, now you know the kind of stuff I watch. Instead of just dragging the lines on the right to try and get them the same length as those on the left, I just deleted them and copied the first three sections again so that the lines are exactly the same. At the bottom right I created a little weekly goal section. For the other weeks of November, I just copied the entire spread and edited the dates. I also copied the weekly planning page for every week of November. Now it's time to download and print. Under file type you can either choose PNG or PDF, whichever works best for you. And here you can choose which pages you want to download if you don't want to download them all. Just as I wanted to print the first two pages, I realized it will be difficult to print them back to back because they are A5 size, which will be printed out on an A4 size page. 
So to solve this, I went back and added a blank page between every spread. You'll see in a bit why this will work. So first I chose page one and selected two pages per sheet so that there's a blank page on the right side. Then I printed that out. Now I'm going to print page two and three of which page two is a blank page. This is so that I can have a blank space on the left of the page so that when I print it on the back of page one that we just printed, the spreads will be back to back. And then I just repeat this process with all the pages. Now it's time to cut all the pages to size. My printer created a thin white border around the print, but I decided not to cut it off because I want some space for where the holes are going to be punched to put the pages into my soft ring binder. To make sure all the pages are the same size, I used the first page as a template to draw a line of where I should cut. Make sure that you always use the same template to ensure consistency. You guys won't believe how hard it was to find this ring binder. I probably went to 10 different stationery shops before I found it in a Chinese store. I guess it's not that popular where I'm from. So as you guys can see, it already has pages in it. So I just took those out that I'm not gonna use. I created this whole template so that I can draw where the holes need to be punched on the pages that I printed out. I couldn't use one of the pages that came from the book because they were a bit smaller than the pages I created. I just took a pencil and drew where the holes will be. Now I don't have a six hole punch, so I just took off the bottom piece of this regular hole punch and positioned it over the pencil circle. Then I just repeat this process for all the other pages. Make sure you punch the holes on the correct side.
enjoyed this tutorial, please give this video a like and subscribe for more because I will be posting more of this content from now on. Also leave a comment below, I would love to hear your thoughts on this video and what you guys think of this kind of planner. Thank you guys so much for watching, until next time, bye!